Okay, let's apply the linear combination of atomic orbitals to form molecular orbitals, the LCAO approach, to the simplest molecule we can find that has more than one electron, and that is the H2 molecule. And so we're going to do the linear combination of atomic orbitals to form molecular orbitals. All right, for H2, let's just take, say, the uh, 1s orbitals. So we have uh, the, these are atomic orbitals, one on each atom, and for the H2 molecule, and we'll combine them in this way. C1 and C2 are combination uh, coefficients, and psi 1s1, this is the 1s orbital, atomic 1s orbital on uh, atom 1, and this is the atomic 1s orbital on atom 2. And we're combining them in two ways. One is we're going to add them, and the others are going to subtract them. So um, this we will find will lead to um, some um, bonding and antibonding orbitals like we had for the H2+. plus. All right, so in general, if, if you have two atomic orbitals, you form two molecular orbitals. If you combine three atomic orbitals, you form three molecular orbitals, and so on. All right, so there's our um, trial wave function, which, and I see a slight mistake here, that should just be H2, not H2+. plus. We're adding and subtracting. So what we want is to calculate the expectation value of the energy, or the average energy. That will be the um, wave function. Uh, what do we call that? Uh, for H2, wave function for H2, with this Hamiltonian, and then wave function for H2. And as we said in an earlier lecture, if these uh, the wave function is not normalized, what you do is uh, normalize it by dividing by uh, this integral here, psi h2. All right, so there's the expectation value. And what we have in there is the uh, wave function, which we're uh, taking as an approximate wave function for the molecule, a linear combination of the atomic wave functions, uh, the 1s wave functions, one on each atom. All right, so uh, if you substitute in for uh, this expression here, uh, this is what you get down here. I've changed again to integral form. Uh, and we're, we're labeling these plus minus as when we're adding the two atomic orbitals or subtracting the two atomic orbitals. Okay, so we're linearly combining two 1s orbitals. So here's the uh, function, or sorry, here's the integral that we have to solve, and this is our normalization integral down here. And h then would be the uh, Hamiltonian for two electrons and uh, two protons, in other words, two H atoms. All right, so um, we know what the wave functions are. They're single electron wave functions. We did this, uh, for example, in the perturbation method for um, solving the helium atom and so on. I won't go through the details of that solution, but just let's say that, um, as you might expect here, uh, we have um, if you multiply these out, we'll get different kinds of integrals here. So we have here the uh, overlap, this is called an overlap integral, where you have the 1s wave function on atom 1, for example, and the 1s wave function on atom 2. And if there's overlap, this integral will not be equal to 0. If it is, if there is no overlap, if they're orthogonal, it will be equal to 0. So this is the overlap integrals. And we're going to say since the 1s on one atom is close to the 1s on another atom, this term is not equal to zero. So i and j could be 1 and 2, or 2 and 1. And then you have this kind of integrals. Those are the integrals that were in the numerator here. So if you multiply that, h that, you get these kinds of integrals. And so this is called the resonance integral here. Um, and it's resonance because you have the 1s electron on, say, atom 1, and this is the 1s electron on atom 2, so you have um, a resonance as if it were the electron on 1 is coupled to the electron on 2 through the Hamiltonian, and that's called a resonance integral. And typically, we'll use this notation later on, we have uh, Sij is an overlap integral, so it's this, that's a symbol for this integral here, where i and j are the atoms that you're combining or the uh, atoms on which the atomic orbitals reside that you're combining. And similarly here, Hij, that's with the Hamiltonian, and that's with um, 
the 1s electron on atom I and the 1s electron on atom J. So if you work these integrals out, you'll find that um, the if I is not equal to J, you do not have this integral is zero, and if um, uh, so therefore you just have H11 and H22 terms. So this is electron one and electron one on both the wave functions coupled through the Hamiltonian, same way with this. And down here uh, you have the overlap integral S12, which is uh, overlap between one and two, and then the overlap between one and one and two and two give you this one term down here. So there's the energies, and this is what it looks like. Uh, these are the H2 molecule, and here you have, just like we had for the H2 plus molecule, we have a orbital, a combination of those two atomic uh, orbitals that give you a orbital that looks like this, and we're going to call this bonding because there's electron density in between the two atoms. And then because we combine two atomic orbitals, we get two molecular orbitals. Here's one of them bonding. The other molecular orbital, which is higher energy, is called, we call that the antibonding orbital, because if you look at the plane right between these two here, just like we had for the H2 plus molecule, we have a nodal plane in which electron density is zero between the two atoms that are forming the molecule and that if you have electron um, density that's zero, that's called an antibonding orbital. So it doesn't contribute to bonding, presumably because there's no electron density between the two. So just like we had for the H2 plus uh, molecule, for the H2 molecule, we get bonding and antibonding orbitals.